right? This board is the uh, is the RF board of the set of two boards that we're that we're building for the uh, spread spectrum RF radio that's going to work at uh, uh, 915 megahertz uh, plus or minus 13 megahertz, and uh, this this board is going to contain all of the RF uh, portion of that radio, and uh, one of the main pieces of that will be the uh, the uh, frequency generation uh, system, which is two uh, phase lock loop uh, controlled uh, voltage control VCOs, and they're going to be mounted right here in these two locations. And uh, so far, I've got uh, some of the the uh, resistor values that are uh, sort of supplying a pad uh, for isolation and to be able to pull samples of that frequency off of that VCO in place and we'll short a couple of values so I haven't soldered the VCOs in place yet. It looks like a 16 pin device but only really three of the pins are being used so uh, so there's really only three main connections in that area. This is the, the PLL, it's a dual PLL that's used to control these two VCOs and uh, that PLL is a, a digital uh, driven PLL, there's a, about a 32-bit word that you program the, the VCOs with that's going to be supplied by this PIC processor uh, that's mounted on board. So, so far we've got the crystal, which is the base crystal for the whole radio, and it's running uh, in 20 megahertz, one volt peak to peak, feeding uh, this PLL, and I'm uh, currently using one of the gates in the PLL to drive the clock on the pick and uh, that's the reason for this one jumper wire. We're going to have to make a slight modification in the next version of the board uh, because I didn't really uh, plan everything out there totally. Uh, this is the reset button for that pick and then these are just some status LEDs which are uh, limited in current by these resistors and controlled by a couple of uh, serially programmable logic gates up here that are also controlled by the PIC. So we can turn on and off some LEDs and then there are also some state uh, switches that are used to switch some of the RF components that are going to be mounted in here later. Uh, you can sort of see where the, the uh, there's going to be a helical filter mounted here and here and a saw filter in this area. And what's the uh, SMA connector you've got coming out of there right now? That's going to be the, the test point for the LO stage. Uh, and if for some reason we can't get the LO stage working properly, it could be an injection point for an external LO. But uh, the plan is that's just really a test point to check the LOs out. And then uh, the, there'll be an SMA connector off the end over here. That's going to be really the business end of the radio. And uh, it's going to feed down this line. And we have a couple of taps in here to do forward and reverse power measurement. Uh, we've got a second... Uh, PLL controlled uh, VCO down here which will be the, for the second IF uh, frequency and that will be much lower somewhere in the range of uh, 85 megahertz. Uh, so we have uh, a two-sided board here. Actually it's a four-layer board with components on both sides and uh, so far I haven't inserted anything on the back side so I think we have to refocus here a little bit. But uh, we've got some very fine pitch uh, soldering to do here and uh, a lot of small chip capacitors and resistors that are uh, going to have to be laid in on this back side of this board so uh, it's going to come up kind of slowly uh, and it's going to take us uh, I'm, gonna, I'm thinking uh, uh, several months to get all of the code developed for the pick and to, uh, and to debug the RF sections of this board to be sure that we don't have any uh, uh, oscillations or uh, loss of signal due to coupling. Uh, and so, conditions. what's the uh, can in the upper right hand corner? That's a uh, that's a TCXO crystal that has a very high uh, accuracy over temperature for frequency uh, standard. And so where are you at in this, this process? I know that the boards came in just as of the Digital Communications Conference. It's about two weeks later and you've been um, acquiring parts and doing parts placement. And yeah, the, the, big, uh, the big challenge is to get all of the various parts in place that are needed. And uh, since these are 
uh, parts that are in demand now because of uh, part 15 type uh, equipment that's being built that's uh, a lot of the vendors have difficulty in supplying parts so uh, things like the uh, uh, the saw filters for instance or uh, they're talking like up to 26 weeks lead time in some cases on those filters and uh, the helical filters right now I've got actually the saw filters but the helical filters we still don't have in hand and uh, and I'm actually concerned about the, the availability of those filters. Uh, and they're 915 uh, megahertz filters, so they're right in the middle of the Part 15 band, and it's just, it may come down to the point that we go out and look for some uh, device that's a Part 15 device that's real cheap or, or been discarded that has helical filters on it and rob the filters off of it. Okay. So, uh, uh, so so that's where we are. We, we're, we're now... Uh, writing code for the PIC processor to steer the oscillators around and uh, we've got all the components we need to to go ahead and construct this oscillator and prove it out and uh, once we know that works and the rest of it is more or less uh, uh, standard RF type things that uh, amateur radio is uh, pretty much uh, proven in the past so I think we can get the rest of it to work. The uh, the second board in this set is the digital board. Wherever it's at. Yeah, and I don't have one laying here. But, uh, but that board is... Uh, well, I thought you had one with parts on it already. No, I don't have it here. I have it at, uh, in my office, actually. Well, go ahead and pull the board out. You can at least point at the board. Yeah. So this, okay. is, the, this is the computer control board. Yeah, this is the, uh, the digital board of the two-board set. And, but uh, this one doesn't have any parts on it because the one that has parts on it is... The office. That's right. Uh, what we have is a, is a Motorola 68360 processor that's going to be placed here. Uh, a couple of flash uh, memory chips that will yield uh, 32 by 512 kilobytes of flash. And uh, this is a pattern for the socket for the DRAM in this area. And uh, this is the uh, Ethernet interface. Uh, the uh, RJ45 port goes back here for the Ethernet plug. Uh, some LEDs to indicate the state condition of the of the network, and uh, and then down on the bottom side is really the the heart of the uh, the modem uh, forward error correction and demodulation. We've got uh, two A to D converters that are 10 bit. Uh, uh, oh, 10 megahertz A to D converters, but we're only going to be running them at a, at a few hundred uh, kilohertz. Uh, a Qualcomm uh, Q1900 forward error correction uh, chip, and uh, and also a Harris uh, uh, QPSK uh, demodulator. So, uh, and, and what's the and modulator. Again? processors is Motorola 68360. So we have three fairly large expensive chips, a couple of uh, medium priced uh, A to D converters, two small logic chips, some higher priced uh, flash memory and uh, uh, Ethernet interface and then standard DRAM memory like you would find in your PC on this side. And how much memory can will that accommodate? Up to eight megabytes of memory. We'll have a 50-pin a uh, insulation displacement connector on the edge here to interface the other board, and we have a BCD interface here to to do a debug and uh, interface with the Motorola chip on this end.